What's up, not just developers? Welcome back to a new podcast. This Hello, is probably everyone. our second one if we're gonna post it. But yeah, like we we had a nice conversation in the previous podcast about how we started as software engineers, and uh, now I want to talk more about uh, how we progressed and what was the next steps after getting into this uh, programming. And probably a good story would be like how I started the software engineering. Uh, company like that we were doing outsource work for other people and how that helped us not only like financially but mostly like to to learn and to to advance the software engineers so that's gonna be the topic for today super excited to have a chat with Lucas he was one of a very important person during that process of starting this company and it's gonna be nice to, to talk about that so if you're ready let's get rolling and some tea. some tea let's go before we get into that like i want to to start with a context of why i decided to to start uh first i started freelancing and then like it grew into this company but yeah like the, the reason why is quite interesting i had the same situation moving to to the university as you i don't know probably in my case it was even more difficult because of a financial situation in my family and just to afford uh, going to to the university for the first year which costed like 2000 euros More like the contract contract and then you had to spend like around 500 euros per month like for uh for rent, the f rent and for eating and i think and it was just even leaving. more i would say like 500 okay the rent was around 350 for me it was 300 okay. and i was barely living out of 200 yeah so this were money that i didn't have at the time and i was taking from my parents but to, to better understand, like I'm coming from Moldova, which is, is considered the poorest country in Europe. Yeah, I think so. And our salaries in that country is like really low. Like my, the salary of my parents combined was probably less than 1000 euro per month. Uh, so that's like the money that we just had to live out and to, to survive. And when you add up this like 2000 euro that for a lot of people might seem like that's not a lot, but in that situation, that was a lot of money for our family. And, uh, it was very difficult to, to take this decision because I really wanted to go abroad to study, but at the same time, it was very expensive and we couldn't afford that. Thankfully to my parents that were like super supportive in all of this situation and like everything that comes to to studies we were like we will do like anything that it takes just to to give you this opportunity which i'm very 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 thankful and i will be for the rest of my life just to, to come to the university my father left our country to work abroad in constructions he's not like in the age to, to to work in the construction and it was very painful for me to see this process and to see like the sacrifices that he has to make just to make it uh, so i could study abroad and study in a good university and um, yeah that's how i went in the first year and then like uh, in the first year during the christmas i came home and the same topic appeared, followed by a lot of like anxiety and stress in the family, which I really, really don't like to, to see that. And my father was already started talking like, I should uh, look for, for a new job, like a new construction job to, to go abroad to pay for your next year. And like that moment was when I made the decision that this will not happen again. Like I will not allow this to happen. And I set myself a decision that I'm going back to Netherlands and um, I'm gonna do anything that it takes just to be able to support myself. So I went back to Netherlands. Uh, we had like a, a government like kind of grant. It was giving you like, I don't know, maybe 500 euros a month, which was nice like just to support myself. But for that you had to work like 56 hours a month. So I said like, I'm gonna try to apply for software engineering jobs. And at that point in time, I already had some experience and I thought that it shouldn't be that hard. I started applying to, to a lot of, uh, of software engineering jobs and like one after another, like deny, deny, deny. And the, mo like, the reason was like, uh, you need to know Dutch, you need to have a degree or yeah, like things like that. So I said like, okay, this is not working. I said that I'm gonna do everything that, uh, that it takes. And I did what anyone else like in the first year was doing. I went to, to work at a fish factory. <laughs> do you know about that? No. Yeah, I went, I went to a fish factory as a 
aspiring software engineer to work and sort out the fish and so on. So um, I did the, um, like, I don't know, like the, the onboarding on that company, like doing all the paperwork and so on. But at the same time, I said like, I'm not gonna give up on my dream of working like in the, with what I do best, like with what I love. And uh, I said like, let me, let me try to, um, to open up like an Upwork account and start uh, applying for jobs and maybe that's your first year of studies or second one? That's my first year of first. studies, like probably like in second, the second half of a year. Yeah, so I came home, uh, I call Andre, like which is, was one of my friend uh, with which we co-founded a couple of startups before. And I say like, come here, um, we're starting a company. So in one evening, we just made a very basic landing page just to, to have like a face. I don't know if that's very important or how that contributed to the success, but I thought that that's necessary, like a portfolio, let's say. And I started applying like a lot of jobs. While I was waiting for these jobs to, to respond on Upwork, it was my first day as working at the fish factory. So I went there, I worked probably for four hours. It was, it was crazy. Like, not the work itself, because I'm not afraid of work. It is, I can bear that. But the whole environment, everything that surrounds you and like, it's very depressing. Like everyone has like stories that they were telling, like how hard it is for them to live and um, what they have to go through. Like they have like kids at home and they have to come to this fish factory to work. So it was very like a depressing situation for me there. I thought that like definitely that's not gonna be uh, possible, but I was willing to do that just to, to support myself. So I come home after the first day of work, working around four hours, and we received the first, uh, we, we received the first client. The first client like accepted the proposal and let's, let's get it done. Uh, I remember that project was like a very simple landing page uh, we were charging, I don't know, around $300 for that or something like that. But it was like the, the milestone that I needed to, to see that. The I first can, step. I, the first step that I, that I knew that I needed. Uh, that said like, I can do something in here, like it's possible. Because like getting your first client probably is the, is the hardest part. And the scariest part, I think. It's, no? for, for, for me, it's not scary because okay. like, I don't know, like I have a same mindset, like what can you lose by applying to these jobs or to applying mm -hmm. to these projects? You cannot lose anything. Yeah. It's, you just have to do it, wait, if it's a no, like move on, that's it. So I received that first one. And the second day in the morning, I received uh, another project for another client that I applied on Upwork. And I said like, okay, this is like the, the beginning, like this is the success, <laughs> that's, that's the beginning of everything. Uh, I called the fish factory and saying like, I'm leaving, sorry for that. They had to go for so many like bureaucratic, oh like to, God, to sign yeah. me up, to give me like a locker and so on, like uniform. I'm like, I'm leaving, I, ca I cannot do it anymore. Like I have something else on the side. They were super fine. They actually paid me for that four hours, like oh, wow. around 50 euros or something like that. So yeah, we started working uh, on these small projects. We started working with Andre and that client, uh, we delivered the first project, so it was successful and he had another one. So he comes to us. I remember like the, the project was, was, was insane. Like he wanted to do so many things. Like the scope of a project was crazy. We wanted basically a Uber Eats clone, like okay. with uh, a dashboard for the restaurants, what we did <laughs> in the live stream, uh, a dashboard for the users, a mobile application for the user, mobile application for the driver, mobile application for the restaurants. Like it was crazy how many things. Yeah. So yeah, like he, he said like, okay, I have a budget of $2,000 or something like that. I said like, this is, that's a lot of money, but I understood that the project is it's huge. Insane. It's, it's insane, yeah. So I, um, I told him like, look, let's, let's just focus on one application or like two, like the web application for the user side and web application for the restaurants. And yeah, like I priced it even higher because it was quite a lot of work there. And yeah, we got, we got started and we were working at this project. And uh, soon I realized that I don't have a capacity to move on like with only me and Andre. I think at that time Andre already left Neverlands, so we were not working anymore together. 
And also at that time was when we started together working at university at projects. And I saw that you are quite interested in, uh, in learning and quite interested in doing all of this thing. And even though you don't have like this the, the experience, like you are hungry to learn and to grow. So I said like, yeah, let's, let's do it together. Like I asked you to, to help me on a project. I don't know if you remember that, like yeah. how, how everything. Oh yeah, I remember that was my first like step going towards the uh, whole software engineering as well. Yeah, and we, uh, you started helping me. I think we started working on a React Native application. No, the first thing I even remember till now, my first task that I yeah. needed to do. Yeah, I, let's hear I, it. I needed, Vadim asked me to put a copyright sign on the bottom of the web page. Yeah. You remember, no? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so that was my first task, which started everything. And from then I didn't stop like working in software engineering, but that was my first thing that I needed. To yeah, do. starting small, like with me, maybe exactly. just displaying a text and then you very soon like grew to to take over a whole applications like then we kind of finished like with big tasks on these web portals yeah and then we decided to go into the um, mobile applications and for that like if i remember it correctly like you took over the whole one of the application yeah. and you web page it was almost finished so only a few steps left so i was still working a little bit there and as well like you said i started very slowly, like with a few tasks. Okay, change color here, add this text here. Then it moves to a bigger one, to bigger ones. And then at the end, I was also like working with the backend and changing like uh, the logic. At the time we were working with Laravel. Yeah, Laravel. You remember? Yeah, right how, now. How was your experience with Laravel? I think I I really liked it. It wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Like it was difficult because it was new for me, but uh, I soon got like, how it's working how everything is connected so basically i remember also like how everything happened when you invited me and said like for the first time like do you would you like to help me and i was like yeah of course like i i will take anything also like don't remember don't forget that i was completely a beginner programming so i was spending a lot of time studying and then taking on top like uh, another work, I would yeah. say. That was very risky in my case. Yeah, we were working a lot, like yeah. sometimes till late in the night. Very in late. The I remember leaving your house like three o'clock in the night or something like that and going with my penny board back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you had to go to university. Yeah, in the morning. I, I was grinding like crazy. And uh, I think it was a very good approach how you started like giving small tasks because then I thought, okay, I can do this, I can do this. And it wasn't that you get, okay, build this whole application. And you don't know right where away. to start. And, okay, what should I do? And uh, too overwhelming. So it was very good and I liked that. I'm not sure how to call it, but uh, it's yeah. the feeling like, I don't know, that you, you achievement, succeed. Yeah, achievement, yeah. yeah. Because I started with, even the small tasks were quite hard for me because everything was new. Just to them, find like where to change, yeah, even if you had to change like base. the color of a button. Exactly. When you're a beginner, like where to find that button. Because the code base was huge. There was a lot, a lot done by then when I joined. And uh, that was, I remember uh, where I spent a lot of time like looking through source code. Okay, this is here. So that means this should be here. And like tr trying to trace, which was really interesting for me uh, at the beginning. And then I started um, small work, which got me, uh, which I enjoyed the feeling of, okay, I got a problem. I'm stuck on it. I'm trying to read, trying to understand, asking you questions. And then I managed to solve it. And this second of euphoria, what kept me going so, so long till now, like uh, why I love software engineering. I think that this, uh, what you're talking about here, like this uh, euphoria that you get, like by, by achieving something, by solving a bug, by this, like this is why, like the whole reason we we're doing software I engineering. So, yeah. Because it's, it's very frustrating at times, it's yeah. very hard at times. But we always know that like, I'm gonna invest like I know five, 10 hours a week, but at the end, like I'm gonna achieve it. Yeah. And the feeling that you get like when you finally solve a bug, like yeah. I, I was talking with Alex, uh, my girlfriend as well about this and she, she's also mentioning this that like, yeah, like when you have this problem, like, it's, it's very hard, like you hate like programming. Uh, but when you finally solve it, it's like, oh my God, I love yeah, that's it. That's such <laughs> a good feeling. It's insane. So this is what kept me going as well. Like, of course, uh, you were also like motivating always. So that was good. Like, I'm not sure how it would have been 
if I would have started alone. But we were approaching everything not as a, you know, in a company, as a co-workers, but as a friends. Because we were working, then taking a break, talking, going like to a shop. And everything was like joking because we were sitting next to each other listening as well. Listening to music. Yeah, listening to music. It was very chill. And I even right now actually today told you like I have such a good memories from there. Yeah. E even though it was work, it was actually like working and it was hard back, like, back then for me. But it was very good memories because of how everything was approached so i think this one also helped a lot like kept going kept me going and yeah these were my first thing and then you were uh, saying like okay would you like to appro uh, take on yourself uh, the whole react native application yeah. while you will add finishing touches to the website to the back end and yeah and i remember saying like <clears throat> okay the whole application to myself that is gonna be wow but then you said okay we will like divide all the work into very small tasks yeah. i you had the designs from that client everything was there the designs uh, we we also did the designs. Oh really? I yeah, didn't yeah, know. Yeah. So he, he was always saying like, "I love your designs. Like do them." Like okay. I'm not a designer. <laughs> so but we, I had them. You sent sent me the screenshots, everything, and they also said like because I back uh, then had zero experience with React Native, nothing at all. I didn't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't remember if I had experience with React Native but back then, I don't or know. why did we choose React Native? To be honest, I think I think I, you had React experience. No. I don't remember, but I think like my first startup, which was before then, uh, I think we tried to migrate it to React Native. We didn't finish, but that got me interested in React Native. Okay. And then I said like, now it's a good uh, approach to, to, to take React Native and build this mobile application. Yeah, and it was them. popular. So I think, but you, yeah, you said like, hey, we're going to build it in React Native and send me one course. I probably, there was, there's no way that I would be able to find that course right now, but that's what got me into React Native. I learned everything by following one course. Yeah. I followed that course. I did everything uh, like on my own then because that course was as well, like not exactly, but very similar to your approach, how you're doing. You're just yep. building one application, taking it small, like step by step. Yep. And that's what I did. I built that application step by step by following the tutorial and then I built the whole application with like my own interpretations yeah. on my own without looking at that code base. And when I did that, I said, okay, we can start like trying, like slowly working on that. Um, I think it was restaurant dash where we started. Yeah. So I started working with that on the designs and uh, somehow I managed Do you think to you, you would learn React Native that good just by following the course without go without having to do it in a real world application? It's hard to tell. I don't have like, of course you need some kind of experience. It's different, but I don't know. Like it's really hard to tell. Like what I um, experience is that like following a course, like you, you learn a lot of things, you understand that, that the whole concept, but it's required to, to take the knowledge, the fresh knowledge that you have and to apply it directly into, yeah. into a real projects. Because the amount of issues and things that you're getting into by building a real application, it's a lot, it's a lot and that's actually um, gluing all the knowledge together. And now it makes sense, like why we do things in a certain way. True. I remember starting also like with very small tasks and uh, without logic. Then I started like to implement the whole logic and somehow I've managed to build a whole application, which was like insane for me. I remember, <laughs> but I remember we were working a lot, like going yeah. to the libraries as well, sitting like constantly there. Of course, there was a lot of Googling, a lot of checking. That's like, what uh, but, it takes. <laughs> yeah, that's what it takes. And uh, somehow it <laughs> turned out to be, I don't know if he's using that application. Right like now. We, we can talk about the whole experience <laughs> of all this project. But yeah, like I wanted to mention, like you, you, you are mentioning about like uh, this euphoria that you're getting by solving small tasks. And I specifically tried to, to give you easy tasks just for you to see that, okay, I accomplished something. And this actually builds like this love for programming, even if it's a small task, just the fact that you are achieving it, like it's very uh, empowering for you. It reminds me of the, of the concept of being in the flow or it might have a different, um, a different term, but basically it means that when you're in the flow, the flow state is when you are doing things and you don't even realize how time pa passes. Like yeah. you're so like focused and interested in what you're doing. And the way to be in the flow is to have like challenging enough tasks 
because if a task is not challenging enough and it's lower than like your experience, then it becomes boring. Yeah. Like if you are, I don't know, doing the same thing over and over and over again and you know it by heart, it becomes boring and you lose interest. And then you're not in the flow state. You're like looking at the hour, like, yeah. and the same happens like if it's too complicated and way harder than your uh, knowledge, then it becomes like very challenging and you get discouraged because like, I don't have a clue like how to do it. Yeah. So like the, the power to, to always be in the flow and to always grow is to, to pick up projects and tasks that are just, just above uh, your knowledge yeah. in order to, to keep you interested, but at the same time to make them possible to achieve and to get to this euphoric moment of like doing it and then like, oh, great success. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and it wasn't easy to build that application by no means. It was re like really difficult, but it, that sense of achievement every time was that kept me going. And I, in the end, managed to build user side as yes, well application. The second application the second as well. One, yeah. It was insane for me back then, like to see the whole application that's going to be like for a client, it was wow. Yeah. While I was just <laughs> in the university, in the terminal, we were okay, two plus two <laughs> equals four. Yeah, yeah. I think that this experience of working on real projects give a different meaning to, to why we'll, we're learning programming. Because sometimes like doing all of these exercises at university and during courses and so on, like you kind of lose like why do we need yeah. that like the whole four years in my college years like i was doing terminal applications and i didn't see a value like yeah. i'm never using a terminal application exactly. that's like i'm using like what i'm using facebook for example yeah, yeah, yeah. or google like show me how to build those but we are not teaching this in in school yeah. and like we need to take that experience that we're learning in school and implement it into a real project that we can see that we can show to a friend and say like, hey, we, yeah. I build it. Exactly. And that was the thing where, where I thought like, it really makes sense how you approach the tutorials on YouTube channel because I didn't have any experience, as I said, like when coming to university and while I was doing those terminal applications, they were still hard for me, but nobody explained me how this will be integrated somewhere. I yeah. was thinking like, okay, will a uh, client ask me to create something in the terminal? Of course, like it's a joke, but I knew that nobody needed, but like I didn't, you didn't see purpose. the big, the big yeah. picture, right? The only like close to when we started to seeing like, okay, kind of, ish things when we started doing Android programming. Or web development. Or web development, but then, it, I kind of saw, but those tasks were as well, like very random and very weird, which like if they would go, they could do exactly the same thing on Android, but just showing like, okay, how to build Instagram clone, let's say. Yeah, that's more and interesting. You, yeah, because you know how that application looks in real life, or you can at least download to check it out and building it in real life makes it that, okay, look what I've built. That's it's Instagram. empowering, yeah, like. Now you, you have a meaning like why you're doing it and you see like how to put all of these pieces together to, yeah. to get to a successful product that by the end is going to be used by users. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I remember like the, the first thing uh, when I created that application that I was showing like on for this client, I was yeah. showing to all my family like, look, I did <laughs> look, it by myself. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, I will always, I will say, tell people like to, um, uh, when we are learning to try to actually build a project, to try to, to implement like the things that we're learning there. Uh, yeah, it, it gives a meaning to, to yeah, what we're doing. Exactly. So that was the first step, at least for me, like yours as well. No, you didn't finish completely like, how you got to the company. Yeah, like uh, I started here like with, with this client and actually like the work increased, like the amount of work. And besides this client, uh, I was receiving other like requests for a smaller project and I didn't manage to do everything myself. So I said like, if I want to, to grow this, like I would need to, to hire people, to hire developers. And that was actually something that I wanted to do. I had this goal in mind of creating a software company and building these projects. So uh, I started hiring um, a guy from Moldova uh, that he was working a lot like for the project. I think he was working full time. So it gave me a lot of space to, um, to tackle other projects and to, to look at the whole business as a, as, a, as a whole. Also, we had like one guy from South America. So we, we had like around like four or five developers by the end. But yeah, like the, we continue working and the main project was this client that we started with. This experience was 
uh, was interesting because it was hard for me to see like a progress. Uh, we started with the same client, the project was huge and I was having like quite a lot of conflicts, not real conflicts, but I saw the way to develop this application and not only the application, but his business a bit differently than he saw it. And I was trying to explain this to him and he couldn't understand the, the whole process. And that's, that's mostly the reason why this project ended where it ended. So we're gonna get there. But basically the client like was focused on, a, I would say on a waterfall approach, which is a very old way of developing applications. And this means like, okay, we, we are doing like the, um, all the requirements, then we spend like the next two years to develop the application, then we throw it in the market and we see if it works or not. How new companies are doing things and how new startups are doing things is more of an iterative way of like, I do an MVP in one month, I release it to the clients, I start working with them, I see how they interact and based on their feedback, I improve it. So as coming from, uh, from having some startup experience and uh, being very interested in startups, I was trying to push him to go with this approach, like, hey, let's, let's just, like, we have a very good product, let's stop here, let's release it, and then based on, on the feedback from the user and the market, let's see how it goes. But he was different, he was like, no, 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 let's develop, like, more features, let's develop this, let's develop this. Yeah. And I quickly lost uh, the sight of where, when this project will end. Will it take forever? Because that's how I felt at that moment. So, I don't know, an example was like, companies had to upload like images for their dishes. And he wanted to build a full scale image editor inside that application to be able to crop the image, to be able to edit the image, to be able to remove a background oh and God. all of this stuff that I was thinking like, is this really that important to, to just get started and get clients and get working? Because I'm pretty sure there are applications that will do image editing way better than us yeah. because we have more resources and more time and they can just do that in an external application and just upload the final image. Like what's the problem in that? No, he wanted to do it that way and it was hard for me. Like these, these moments were, were very difficult. For some things like I was really losing my mind, like I was throwing like the bottles like in my room, like I couldn't, I couldn't bear like the, this because I really, really wanted to, to see this project on the market but I didn't see like a, a timeline. I didn't see when it's gonna happen. So we continue working and working and working for this client. Like I think by the end it was like probably two years or one and a half year. And that project went, went huge, like it was insane. So you yeah. can imagine like after working for one and a half years, the complexity increases and every new feature that we were adding was contributing to this like increased complexity. And it was making everything like even harder and harder and harder. So yeah, like that was the experience with, with this client. And um, I think at that time, like, yeah, I got uh, accepted at Amazon to do my internship there. And I said like, this is a moment like just to, um, to say that that's it with a client and to stop working with him. Even though like I, I really invested so much time and so much soul into this application i had to do it because i thought that like if i'm gonna continue like it's gonna be the project of my whole career mm -hmm. like i'm gonna i can go on like 10 years to work on this project and um yeah i wanted to, to work at amazon i told him like hey sorry like i cannot continue and he was like begging me to to remain <laughs> he was like look i'm gonna buy a, an apartment in amsterdam you will be able to live in that apartment uh, for free while working with me and I'm gonna buy you a car and I'm gonna uh, pay you even more than Amazon does. I'm like, man, like that really sounds good, but but like the, the feeling that I had like working and all this experience, like I couldn't bear it anymore. And for that reason, like I, I stopped working and with that client, like the whole company actually stopped working. Mm. And very good story, probably I should mention it at the beginning. That's where not just development is coming from, actually. That was the name of a company that I, I started um, during my university years, not just development. So yeah, when, when we transitioned to YouTube, I decided to, to keep it that way because it's, it really shows like our values and what we're it's doing here. A name. It's a very catch. Good, yeah, catch. And I remember on that time while we were working with this client, I just wanted to say in order to emphasize how much we were at least like 
I was for you it was university was easier that's why it's a little bit different because you had quite a bit of experience from work at that time like I focused so much energy on this company that I was not going to, to university yeah, classes was, I, was, uh, I was skipping a lot like but it was okay for me because my I had a bit of experience so yeah. during exams like I was just prepared I was coming at the last lesson when yeah. everyone was preparing for the exam I was looking like what's this subject about then studied for one day and yeah you were usually like first and last yeah at, at the first, start later first, only last lesson <laughs> first lesson to see how it's going to be structured yeah. and last lesson to 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 get ready for yeah exam. so and then uh, that's on our second year while this whole thing is happening like we're working with this client and then uh, we get basically a I, I'm, I'm not sure like a notification or something like that on our G email account that university is looking for a few software engineering students as a teacher assistant yeah basically do you want to apply that was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was at the end of the first year it was actually before uh, you uh, suggested me to work uh, with this yeah yeah i of course apply a lot of people applied to there to be honest so they also applied like, uh, yeah it's a uh, it was a position to be like, yeah, teacher assistant and to, to help as a second year student to help the first year students to get started because they saw how many of them failed and they yeah. wanted to, to see like, how can we better uh, improve like our uh, course in order for more people to, to succeed. Yeah. So it was, I think, one lecture a week or two. Uh, I think more like two probably. Yeah, so maybe two lectures a week. We as a teacher assistants, we had to basically give to first year students yeah and uh, okay so a lot of people applied so the first round was uh, they were checking the ones who applied they were checking their grades and actually because i failed uh, on the first year i was studying a lot a lot and i passed uh Android programming, I got a 10. Introduction programming, I got 10 as well. Nice. And basically a lot of very high grades on uh, programming related uh, subjects because that's where I was spending my most time. Like business analysis, yeah. I got a six or something <laughs> because it was very not you interesting. You just focus on what's the most important. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I got very huge grades and that's why I got past the first uh, basically phase. And you, I think we got as well, like high, very great. I think as well, nine or 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the first year, it was yeah. quite easy for me. Yeah. So we got past, and I think uh, they were looking for four international students yeah. and four Dutch students. Yeah. So then the second part was where like you had an interview. Yeah, like an interview. But was it with the role playing? The yes. second one right yes. away, right? Yeah. So basically how it went it was we, we had to go to a room with the two uh, programming teachers and we had to role play a, a, a teacher and explain a problem to, to a, student. a student basically which was uh, our actual teachers yeah. of programming and they were giving us a problem but i wasn't able com to completely explain this problem uh, to the student but i was talking a lot like it depends I, on how how much yeah talk. <laughs> i was talking a lot and i was trying like to be actually really role play not like i i think i had an upper hand because a lot of programming uh, students in our class were like okay add a add a plus here and that's why but and i was trying to approach it like how i would want as a zero experience student to like get information like step by step what we were looking for in that uh, exercise is not like not for us to solve a problem yeah. but for us to help the person solve it themselves yeah so this is very important when you're teaching someone to let your ego aside because it doesn't matter if you understand what it matters if a student understands yeah. So a lot of people just came there like, oh, I know how to solve this problem. Yeah, like you exactly. just have to do this. And the teacher like, okay, but you didn't help me understand it. So you had to approach it like, yeah. like differently to ask good questions to the student. Like what exactly you don't understand? Like, okay, let's yeah. see. Let's... Exactly. And I was doing this. And even though at first I, like, as I said, I didn't spot the problem. I was trying by asking questions to buy myself time <laughs> and to understand what's the problem. And while I was asking him questions, he was answering. I was looking at the code and trying to find the problem. And that's how I found where the problem is. Uh, not like as well, I heard like a teacher was saying that a lot of students just came 
and they were looking at this computer screen trying to figure out the problem themselves for like five minutes and only then starting to some somehow help the student but i was trying to do it in the meantime and i spotted the problem at the end and uh, everything uh, went Good. Yeah, and we and got we, the we got the job as uh, us, yeah. teacher teacher assistant student yeah. teacher. Yeah. How how is it called? Teacher assistant. Yeah, yeah. So we both of us yeah got the job, and uh, that was again like extra things work. that we extra work because also you had to prepare for the class you had yeah. to study the materials but it was uh, i would say a good experience it was very good especially for me now that that i'm went into the education i think that point was very important for me to to understand that i really like teaching students uh teaching new concepts and the the thing that i like the most is like when the student gets to that aha moment yeah like you, there is a hard concept and you're trying to to teach it and then like the, you see the bulb light up like yeah, yeah. and like oh that's how it's done or that's why it's not working and i think that's that's the best feeling yeah yeah even later on somehow so they didn't need that many teacher assistants and they had to choose two yeah that will not be teacher assistants anymore so we stayed actually yeah. together and that then means we were doing yeah, something good that there. means we were doing something good and it was really nice and actually we were the only ones who stayed as internationals and yeah. the, we were mixing up with the dutch then yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i remember like a lot of uh, like students that i was teaching like not to brag or anything but they told me that because of me they actually understood some of the yeah. object-oriented principles that um that they had to learn and the way i was trying to to explain them like is more more with examples like teachers were very theory based like this is a class this is an object this is a private method and so on but the way i try to explain them based on i don't know is picking a game like let's yeah. say like we are playing uh, tetris and then you had like the class for the um, uh, object like in the Tetris and every object has like different parameters width, height, form and so on and that made them understand yeah. like how, how like class maps to the object what is a object what is a class like why do we need methods and so on so yeah like i think that's uh, that was how i managed to, to to explain them and to to get to that point for me what helped actually in this case was that um, a lot of teachers who actually teach their subjects have already multiple years of experience with programming or teaching and for me i was very new to this whole and i knew how i would like mm -hmm. to be like to be presented the whole information so that's how i uh, tried to explain them as well yeah. because i knew like okay what where i had problems well, yeah what, what didn't make sense for yeah. me yeah that's also very important um uh, like the, the closer you are in experience to the student, the better you will explain because you'll understand in what position is he. Because yeah, like if, if you have a lot of experience, like you you start using maybe a lot of jargon yeah, that, that's true. That, that for you makes perfect sense, but for the student doesn't. That's why I always try to use it as least jargon as possible just to, to make sure that it's clear for everyone. Because yeah, like jargon makes you feel good and makes you feel smart but it's not beneficial for, for everyone to, exactly. to understand the concepts. Yeah, so that was uh, basically the first steps into programming world as a, like, as a job. And then, yeah, by the end of the year, I don't know, we were, oh, I remember, you remember InstaDial? InstaDial. That oh, was also yeah. on the second year because I finished working on those uh, mobile applications yeah. and that's it. Uh, you kept working with him on his insane requirements for yeah. the websites and I wasn't working. So by it was the end of the second year, all, almost like completely. Yeah, yeah I remember uh, we weren't working. I wasn't working. I was just studying. And then I just told you that, look, I, 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 I finished this uh, course. Yeah. I showed you the website, like how it looked like. You said, oh, okay. And then you said like, uh, do you want to do one uh, website because yeah. you had an idea? It's <laughs> always like I go to sleep and like one idea pops into my mind, like I want to build it, but I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. And then I said, yeah, okay, why not? And then I, I totally like, forgot about that now. project. It didn't live too, too long. Yeah. Because but... it, I don't, for, I didn't forget about it because for me, the, those were the first year, the first few steps, websites, mm -hmm. applications that were 
at least for a little bit. <laughs> so what we tried to do there was like some kind of uh, automation tool for Instagram. Yeah. Uh, like a liking bot or something like liking that. Liking following bot. Yeah, with, with a nice user interface for people to, to set it up. So yeah, that's, that's what you are doing. I don't remember what happened to, to that project. I, I think Instagram didn't like it, so we weren't able to promote it. And then we said no. Oh yes, and for that reason, up until this day, like my uh, ad account on Facebook is, uh, is blocked. And oh, I cannot do okay. anything. I cannot run <laughs> ads now just so? because of that project. But it was worth it. Like we, we tried, we learned. Yeah, and I got on. a lot of even more experience. But uh, like, Talking about your side, do you regret starting this whole experience like with the clients and mm. stuff or would you do anything differently or would you do the same exact things? Um, I think starting it, definitely no regrets. I never regret starting something. Always start if you, if you have an idea because it, it cannot go badly. Like, I don't know, unless you are starting, I don't know, drug dealing or something like that. <laughs> but if you're trying to do something like good, like starting is not a problem. Uh, the way I would do it, like I would probably do it a bit differently. Like the problem with that company was that it was very heavily based on one client. Yeah. Yes, I had like projects here and there, like smaller projects, but it was very heavily based on that client. And basically, my relationship with that client defined the, um, the future of yeah. my company. And I think that was my mistake that I did. And in a way, you could see that I was not running a company, I was just working for someone else. So, and in fact, like mostly it, it has its truth. And in these regards, I would do it differently. I was talking these days, we, we had a, a guest that he has like a company building websites but he's very smart about that. He's taking only like very small projects, very clear project that has a start and an end. And um, he's using very easy technologies like, uh, like no code tools or um, things like that that you, allows you to build application fast. And because of that, like it's very predictable for him, like, okay, if I get into this project, when it's gonna start, how it's gonna end, like, and what people will, will be required there. And that allows him to, to delegate most of the stuff and focus on the business. This is another problem that I had back then, and actually a problem that now I'm realizing that I have it, not just development as it is right now as well, and I'm trying to, um, to learn and to grow in this direction. And I'm talking specifically about, like I'm reading the, the, the book, uh, the E-Myth something. What the, this book is about is about technicians turning into business owners. Mm -hmm. Basically a person who is very good at one job, I don't know, plumbing, programming, anything. And then he says like, I'm that good, like I need to start my own business. One, why do I need to work for this person? I need to start my own thing. What happens then is that they go into their own business and they are just creating a, they're not creating a business, they're creating a job for themselves. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're basically even more dependent on this job because it's their business, it's their work. And um, they start, tackling all of these technical problems like coding. In my, in my case, it was like coding. So I was mainly focused on coding all of the time. I didn't allow uh, and I didn't have more time for doing business development, for looking for new clients, for better mm -hmm. clients, for trying to set good processes in the company for me to, to delegate as much work as possible and to focus on this uh, business development because I was that focused into the actual implementation and actual coding and yeah This is a problem of technicians turning into business owners and um, This is again like what I realized now with not just development because after after the launching the course I went through a period where I felt a bit overwhelmed of everything that was happening mm -hmm. of all the work that needs to be done yeah. because besides all the work that I had before now we have a new batch of students that all of them need support, all of them need help. And uh, I was taking this responsibility myself. I was personally going and helping everyone in the course. And I felt that like there is so much work that I cannot sustain it. So going through this process, this tough process, I realized that this is a great opportunity for me to, to grow as a business owner 
and to learn how to delegate more, to learn how to set processes up in order for things to happen with or without me. So yeah, that, that's the experience that it took me a long time to understand. It took me a long time to realize that this is the problem. And I'm super excited to learn about this uh, now and to have this opportunity to grow. Okay. But on the other side, you could say that if it wasn't for that client, I'm not sure if we would have started working together and I'm not sure if we would have uh, like stay in touch till now after university because the fact that you were so overwhelmed with everything, you probably asked like, if I want to help. And then of course I agreed and we started like working throughout then. Then you saw that, okay, I know, I'm not sure what was your impression, but I imagine that you saw that, okay, I like, I'm not afraid of the work. I, if I say I'm gonna do, I will try my best to actually yeah. finish it. And then that's how we started working. And then after even like right now, you were a bit overwhelmed as well. Like you yeah. had a lot of things and it's crazy like how much to do. And then you said, okay, maybe you would like to also like help again. And then yeah. we started again working together, which is, I think that client like gave the first steps, the yeah. first seeds into working together. Yeah, never regret like the things yeah. that I did because all of them like leads to where I am right now. Exactly. And even the, the fails that I have, like I'm very grateful for them because I always think like, what if that company kind of succeeded? Yeah. I would be like stuck with that company and I would never start the YouTube channel. Exactly. I would never be able to help so many people here on this platform. And I always look at the, all the fails like as a very important part of the, of the process of growing. Don't afraid to risk. That's, I think, the best thing to take out of this podcast. A lot of risks were taken, like taking Definitely. a lot of work. But, but what risks? Like what, what risk I was having to lose? Because this is the moment like when you, you feel that, yeah, like starting something is scary, but why is it scary? I don't know. Do you have like, if you have like a family and kids and people dependent on you, that's a different story. Yeah. But when you are young, like this is the moment to try the wildest things that you can possibly think exactly. of because the worst case scenario is going to be, it's not going to work. And stop. Yeah. And that's it. And then you move on and go to a, to a job. Yeah. It, it might, you might be right. Yeah. So. That was a great podcast. Yeah. I really enjoyed talking about that. In the next one, we are talking probably about our experience at starting Fitinium, working at that, what it means to be a CTO and what responsibilities do you have to be a CTO at a small startup. So super excited about that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, not to miss that one. Let us know in the comments down below what other topics we should discuss. And if you enjoy this type of uh, content that we're doing, I'm super excited. Thank you, Lucas, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. <laughs> right, Linko. <Lincoln. laughs>